Okay, I thought I'd come down early. Bring the van, I cracked the van here and now I've got everything in I need to get on the boat. But um, I just come down early. And lucky I did. I um, didn't allow myself time to empty the tender. And she will be full of water, even in the flotation tanks. And towing the boat, I need her empty. So I've got to tip her over, empty her out, both the tanks, ballast tanks are before. And then I've got to drag her over to the edge there to get on the boat. That's the beginning of our journey. Okay, part two, we've got on the boat, the tender's on here, and we've got to restart the engines now and get everything ready to move. The in the cabin, we're ready to go. Well, we're on our way down now. We're um, heading across the crowd. We've got phone compasses on. We've got the phone on because I know the phone, but I'm practicing with this. So I haven't really used it much. But, um, it should do the job. Anyway, crow point over there, here we come. Okay, so we've got here, we're down at Crow Point now. Can we get Danny and the tender over and Danny will take us up? So, uh, are you ready, Lila? Well, there's my boat all ready for the morning. And Danny's is there, his wife's on there waiting for him. And um, we're just going to have a fire and a couple of beers and um, enjoy the hour and a half before we go to bed. And uh, up in the morning and off to school. Well, We've got both the boats ready, Danny's is ready. Danny's just gone over to get another beer. We won't be long about tonight because it's getting dark now, as I say. You don't look it on the phone, but um, it is makes you enjoy the fire. Anyway, up early in the morning and out to sea. And hopefully if the wind stays in the direction it's in now, we'll get blown out lovely. Okay, the fire's gone out. Got a little drop of beer. I'm going to sit here now and have a finish my beer, then drop my bed down and get an early night and ready for the morning. Okay, 20 past 6 in the morning, we're up and running and ready to go. Danny's at her to his cell and I've got to start my motors and get everything ready and we're off out over into the big way yonder. I don't know if I'll be able to film much going out but there you go. Just left the mooring now and we're heading out for the bar. And we seem to be doing a little bit quicker than last night. Don't know why, but we're going a little bit faster than last night's tide. So anyway, we're um, heading for the bar and long gone. Coming up on the lighthouse now, and I'm going to cut across to the first boys over there. There should be enough water. Well, that wasn't bad. We're past the first marker. But today we come all the way along the coast instead of going out all around the boys. So that was a damn sight quicker. Well, there's not a breath of wind, but this is just an average sea day. So wait until the wind picks up and the waves. That's when it gets rough here. I, uh, I'd give anything to be on the Mediterranean. They've only got to worry about the wind. They've got no ground underneath because there's no current flowing. But, um, Anyway, the sun's coming out. We should be in that line of sun before long. I ain't gonna film much more now. I wanna get out past the bar before I film and I think it's just a, a normal everyday trip out now on the motors. There once was a lucky duck. His feathers all ugly and grey. There's Danny on the distance. Over there, Daniels. And there's another boat. Might have been Rod in actual fact. It looked like his boat. But it looks like he's heading for London or out into the middle. So neither of them got their sails up yet. But looking at mine, if I wanted to run down wind, I'd have them up. But I'm not. I should have uh, hold on till I clear the bay and turn across wind and get attacked down that way. Down towards Cavelli and then back up. <laughs> Unbelievable. It, that, that, just went so lumpy back there then, even this motor was howling in the, in the bloody well. You don't normally get that as outboards that do that normally. Just now I lost my tender, I had to turn around and go back for it, so I'm sort of five, ten minutes behind anyway. But um, 
come on the outside marker now and uh, then we're over that bar and uh, we're on a winner then well it might not look like it but there's a boy we're going to but, um, GPS is what we're following, regardless of where the boiler truck it is. Anyway, once we get over this bar, we can cut the motor and drift for a while. And um, there is a bit of breeze coming from behind. And considering I'm doing three knots forward and that's still flowing, I think when I um, get over this bar and cut, I can mess about and get my sails up. So, um, yeah, let's just get over there and. Um, Get it done and over and done with and get away. We're coming right up onto the bar now, so you're gonna expect it to get a little bit rougher here, even with no wind, it's like this on a this is an average day, isn't it? Let's face it. Still hour and fifteen minutes so far, and I'm just crossing the bar now. Once I get clear of it, I'm gonna put the cells up and see what we got. Well, we got clear of the bar. We're just coming up to the outside marker now, and we're drifting that way anyway. We're drifting down towards um, Artland Point, which I'm just hoping the wind picks up, otherwise, I'm going to get blown around the corner. The tide down there is horrific. Anyway, I'm sat here. I haven't got enough wind. The cells are flogging and flapping, and the tender is trying to overtake me. And there's nothing I can do to get. I, I tried starting the motor and getting me across what I think is a little breeze. But it ain't no good, the boat just wants to sit like this. It's not even properly held to. It's, um, crap. Just my luck when I come out when he's seeing light winds, I get light winds. Trouble is, when I come out and he's seeing 20 mile an hour winds, I get 30 or 40 mile an hour winds. Just my luck. But there you go. Well, there's a slight little bit of breeze picked up now. That flag's a really light cloth, so it looks stronger than it is. But we're actually holding the sails now, and we've got the boats actually moving, and I've got rather dead centre, so I'll lead the boat on her own now. She can just steer herself and um, keep us going wherever we're going. But I think we're more or less going to get out to Lundy as we are, to the north of Lundy. But um, if the wind picks up, I'll start doing some after about a cup of tea. Anyway, I'll put the camera on and say I've cleaned all the decks, put all the ropes away, all the ropes are stowed in their boxes now because it's going to be a two, three day cruise or whatever and you just want no mess on the back of the boat. So anyway, we're coming at the outside marker now. Must be two hours. Well, it's just gone nine o'clock and uh, we've cleared the bar well and truly now. And um, she's on a, on attack, steering herself. And I'm getting 1.8 knots and basically we're heading to Lundy 3 which is my top mark so I'm just going to sit here and sit here and sit here and see what happens when we get out there I've got the choice of either going on round Lundy which would be wrong with the tide or going over to the anchorage and join Danny at the anchorage so uh, we're waiting to see but I'm here keeping beer company I'm having a cup of tea well, the boat's on attack now going towards Lundy, I've got it set for Lundy but it's going, if we keep going like this we'll cross, a, cross the top of Lundy and miss Lundy by about a mile but uh, me and Lira are sat in here now, we're just going another cup of tea and it's saying we're going to take seven hours, six and a half hours to get to Lundy so we'll sit back, we'll get there about four or five o'clock this afternoon Well, I can sleep in any conditions and uh, like I say, I'm linear now, legs are crossed. I've got my knee up against the beam here, and that keeps me in place. And my lear is here, she's bouncing about a little bit, but she's happy enough. Here you, madam. So, um, five, four and a half hours now to Lundy. So, there's nothing else for it but to sit in and watch the weather as it bounces by us. Wish my windows was clearer, but there you go. I just come forward now and I'm dead up in the nose of the boat against the cupboard and I'm looking out the back and it's rather um, 
can't see a lot out there because the sun's blocking the window but from my point of view the toys going up and down and Lyra is in the worst place she could be right on the front of the boat if she was in the middle of the boat it wouldn't be so bumpy perhaps she should be better off on the floor perhaps she'd be better off on the floor Lyra yeah maybe better you try it way way to Tipperary see that's the wrong word earlier isn't it it's a long way out to old Lundy, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to little Lundy, but we'll get there later, we know. Tea time with anchor in the bay, have a nice cup of tea. Then see about a walk on the beach, and if we can have a pee. It's <laughs> alright folks, when I'm out here, I'm... Like I'm not really singing to myself all the time, I just thought I'd give you a bit of my repetition. So there you go, it's getting near the middle of the tide, or, or the ladder of the tide. So I just turned around to see what tack I can get, and as you can see, I'm still heading straight back into land, basically going home. That's the other tack. That's with the tide and the wind, so I'll go back on the proper tack, and at least we'll go into Lundy that way. Don't let's lose any more time. So I've come back around on the other tack now. I'm going to miss Lundy, but at least I'm going out towards Lundy. I'm not heading back towards home. So, um, it's murder out here because the seas are rough and you see the sails banging about and the little flag going. You think it should be blowing at Uli, but it ain't. That's about a three, four mile an hour breeze. But the sea makes it as rough as all boots because it's the water, not the, not the air. It's the ground underneath here and the tide that makes it rough. So it seems like we should be popping along and we're not, we're doing 1.8 knots, 1.7, 1.6. It's, um, it's unbelievable out here. It is um, trying to keep it on track, it's like pain in the ass. Anyway, I've got nothing better to do than make the video. Uh, there's what um, will have come in the distance, Croyd. Thornton and own bases over there somewhere and this here this little alteration I done is bloody fantastic if I want to stick it in the middle I got two of them but this one's for sailing on this tack and the boat just holds herself the rudder looks like it's over this way a bit but in actual fact it's more or less center it's this that's out with the rudder I need to straighten it really but I'm bending it terrible and um, the cleats so now I put them on at this angle they flick up and off and I can go from tack to tack now, no effort at all. And, and I block the, the cleats up up there, the cell hasn't caught on it once. I have one problem really. I've heard my job, so I'm going so slow that when I try to come about, I, <laughs> I end up doing it two or three times because I'm not going fast enough to get a tack. And um, the way the boat's set up, you can't turn her downwind, it's next to bloody impossible. So, I don't know, there's something to be desired with this old boat, but she sells beautiful, as I say, and I don't have to do any work. And we never use much fuel coming out today. I marked that, and now it's about there. So I reckon we use two litres. That ain't bad for more or less two hours running. So that's about right, I suppose. The tides ease right off the map now, and the wind feels strong out here in the open but it ain't it's next to nothing and, and I got I ain't getting enough speed to be able to turn about so every time I turn about to test whether I'm going better this way it's, it's a day's work trying to get back on the other way. The boat is just slow but um as I say I'm doing two point or three three point one knots now but um it's totally going the wrong way. If, um, if I go with this tack, I'm going to head up, I'll be going home again. So I don't want to go home, do I? Here, look. There's home over there. Here's, um, Heartland Point. If you haven't go anywhere I want, with the wind, now I could head out Heartland Point if I wanted. But I don't want to, I want to go well to my right to London. The other cell, I just lost the cell there. There's literally nothing here, I've got no speed. So the minute you lose the cell, you're going so slow, you haven't even got much rudder to get you back round to get the cell back in the wind. It's just, 
Oh look, it's probably come out with less than forecast here and next to no wind. I'm afraid I'll get no bloody wind. One, um, one salty dolphin all on his own here. Just come round the boat, he come from the front, went round me and disappeared over there. So uh, there he goes. Bye bye dolphin, it looks like there's mates on the horizon over there. Yeah, we'll see them again later. I've lost the sails again, the wind. Looks like there's a lot of these here flapping, but there's nothing. It's the, the, the wave banging the boat backwards and forwards that makes the sail flap like that. There's no bloody wind at all. This dolphin is going around me at the speed of light. I think he's having a fill out of his mate there. Hello, you lot. Hello, there's a couple of them here now. It's because I'm going slow, they're really um, firing around me at a speed of light. Come on then, compete on this move, yo. Come on. They, um, they're kind of fantastic, man. Because I'm not already moving, like they, um, it seems like they're going fast. Normally they'd be going along at my sort of speed. But there they are, look at them. Boom. They are fantastic. Uh, yeah, they just seem to love sailboats. That's what it is, this one. I could go on filming them all day, but they've given me my visit, they're leaving now. They come and do their quick blast around you, say hello, and then gone. Anyway, that's another day. But the wind's dropped now, it's, as I say, next to nothing. I'm having a job to maintain these cells, and I'm barely moving. So he's just picking up slowly, going back the other way. You can see my angle's changed now and I've got no speed at all. Literally, no speed at all coming up. I am. Um, when you start out here, with the cells banging about like this, and look at this little flag, this little flag spins a piece of like really thin cloth. You think there's a howling only blowing out here, but I've got a job to keep the cells still. It's, it's just unbelievable. Unless it's blowing 18, 20 mile an hour out here, sailing is a waste of time. I can see why everybody uses their boat engines. But for me to start my engine to get there, no way. I just stay out in the middle of here all night, I hope to, and drift up. I might just drift up and go into um, Ilfracombe again tomorrow night in Ilfracombe tomorrow night. And then come back on Friday. But um, if I can't get round Monday, well, if I can't get in a position to get round Monday. Then I might as well avoid it and do something worth doing. Well, if I want to head for the Alpha Coombe, the Alpha Coombe's right up there and round about here somewhere. So, um, the tide will be changing in a minute. If I want to go there, I'll have to tide with me all the way. And, and the wind, believe it or not. Well, I say the wind, the breeze. So, I keep sitting down on my cushions over there and I keep banging my ass. So, um, yeah, I can see me changing plans because I'm not even halfway to London yet. So, um, I really do want to go around that day. I, I just, I could just stay with this tide as I am now. When the tide turns back out tonight, go down the back of London tonight. Or hope to, and hope that I, I, I can go down there in the daylight or early morning. Because I really do want to get some film down the other side of that day. So anyway, we'll take it as we do it. Out here, it's all play it by ear. But there's um, Willacombe, Croyd, Thornton, and that's the point that goes round up towards Bristol. And home is over here. It doesn't look that far away, but take it from me, it is. So, yeah, let's carry on. We're on the distance, it's another sailor, just like me. All his cells are put away and he's on the motor. Ha <laughs> ha! That's all the old out here. There's not enough wind to blow your fucking fart off you. It's unbelievable. You've got to put up with all this roughness for no wind or nothing. Look, the cells are only just managing to keep a bit of breeze. Every time you flop on a wave, it takes the, the power out of the, what, what it's going into with the wind. Looks like he's heading for a Monday. But the only way you're going to get there is on that motor, mate, tonight. Not for me, I'm afraid. Okay, I've sat here in my number scenario for me as I can. And even if I head up the hill from tonight, there might not be a berth in there. And, and um, it's here, I, I, I've got to get her ashore tonight. She, 
She ain't been to the toilet since last night. She won't go on the boat. Well, she will, but if she has that desperate, it hurts her stomach. I just can't sit here with the worry of it. I'm not going to make it one day. The wind direction's not changing. And um, look for what wind there is, as I say. But now I'm making a tack back the wood zone. Bear in mind I'm going lower than the home point, but as I go across now, the tide is picking up and it will blow me more to the zone. So, um, I'm having a job. The only way to keep a perfect tack, the only way to keep a perfect tack is to sit here on the chair because the, the wind is that light, the sails can't keep the boat on a steady track. So I might have to get the autopilot out and give that a try. But um, if the wind picks up, I'll be okay. But anyway, I'm moving one at heading home and, and I might sleep on the boat and head out again in the morning. Nothing else to do. Well, as you can see, the tack I'm getting is lower than the home point, but the tide is coming up across there and as it picks up, it will change my tack now, like it did on the way out, it'll change it and I will go into the harbour but um, the wind is so slight each wave every time the wave bounces the boat away from the cell the cell loses a little bit of wind that's going into it so what I've actually got to sit here and steer it to keep that nose on attack yeah I feel like now I'm losing it I, I, I'm losing the plot then see the cell was completely going to collapse it's um Oh, it's a pain in the fucking ass. That's why I like howling all this. Same with the bloody hang gliding. If your wind ain't blowing over 20 mile an hour, it's no fun. It's a fucking sailboat or a glider, for fuck's sake. They want wind. And dogs and sailing do not mix. Don't matter how much you even try. When she was younger, her and Sam used to be able to manage a few days out here. But not now. Look at the sail now. It's just... Um, just coming and going with that as the waves is flopping me about so the cell is spilling or lowering nothing I can do is just um, try and keep on the best course I can for home manually so it's a pain in the ass but here we go okay I've settled for the worst tack angle because so I can't sit there my neck's killing me in this bloody draft the air is quite cold but as you see I can go in it's taking me down south of home, home's here, in here. But, uh, it's taking me down south, but as the tide changes and it flushes back up, so it should have with that tack more. But if I sit and if I sit and hold it, heading directly home, it's just I'm going to get there an hour and 25 minutes. That's too early anyway. So I'm going to sit back and see where this course takes me. And uh, as I say, if, if I'm, I'm late getting in tonight, I'll go in on low water. I'm not worried. I'll, um, I might even go to Insta for the night, have a night on Insta and that might be a, a change and then if I do want to come out again in the morning it would be easier leaving Insta than um, leaving here. So I might do that, I'll have a think about it on the way in now and uh, we'll see how it's going. But take note everybody, like in my previous, everything goes to Cavelli. I can't help but go to Cavelli. Every time I'm out here, I go to Cavelli. I don't want to go to Cavelli, but I can get there every time. Chuck a boy in the harbour where our moorings are, and the boy ends up down Cavelli. Yeah, I bet my tender's over there if I want to look for it. But anyway, there's no way I'm starting my motors. I'm not a loser, I'm a winner. I can't win by playing the game, but I don't want to be playing the game. You know, you don't do boxing and kick people to death, do you? Yeah. Anyway, here we go. Well, like I said, this is, um, it's not enough wind to keep the speed on so the rudder doesn't act, react when it goes on. I've got the cells are keeping it trimmed, but there's no power under the hull to keep the hull balanced, so I can't balance the whole boat. So as I see, I've been sitting here for nearly an hour now, and this is really bloody hard work. And um, I've gone in, I tied it up for a cut of sec, I've gone and got the autopilot and put that on now and see if that'll keep it in these right conditions. When I say light, it didn't look like I know, but that's the sea state, that's nothing to do with the wind. But the breeze is next to nothing. But I'm going to get home, no trouble at all, it's just that I don't want to have to sit on this bloody chiller, my neck's freezing. The little boat there going on complete opposite tack to me, 
but he must be going quite well because he's going with the tide. So, um, anyway, they say don't have a dog if you want to bark yourself because you can't. Bloody gutted. I, my toes are tender, so when I get to any of the ports, I can go in, but there's nothing I can get to. None of this along here you can go in on your tender. Cavelli you can, but I don't know where the anchor at Cavelli. So, um, I won't, and plus it'll be open to the, the wind tonight, so it's not a, a good anchorage for tonight. As I said, that's why Danny's gone to Lendy. Lendy is um, sheltered from it tonight and would have been the place to go, but I can't get there, not unless I do what Danny does and run me motor. But there's no way I run motors on a sailboat. That's like having a sailplane and turning the power on that. I got it's a sailboat, it's a sailplane. So I just cannot, my mind won't let me do it. Of course, or not, I can't afford the fuel, just keep, just to come out of here, it must have cost me three and a half quid in fuel. So to get to London, it's going to be like 10, 15 quid. I can't do that every time I go out in a boat. And plus it's wearing your old engine out. Know? I just, um, nah, I'm, one, I'm a sailor, end of story. But, perhaps not much longer, because I can't keep coming out here thinking of her. She's old dog now as well, but she can't hold it like she used to. Anyway, we're getting home. Let's try this bloody autopilot. Well, the autopilot's working its little heart out. I, um... I've got to do minus and minus and minus to get it. We're keeping the heading anyway, but um, it's not the tight heading like I wanted. I was going for this reach very hard across the, the current and the wind, but that would have got us in too quick anyway, really. Here's that other boat coming back now behind me. He must have given up. So it might be broad, I wonder if it is. If it is, that was a boat I was thinking of asking how much he wanted for it. And the way he's pacing around there, if that is him, he'd be worth buying. Seems a little bit quicker than this one. So, um, anyway, let the old toilet do the work now and um, keep us on this track and time it to cut back in when, when I want to, to get back in the harbour at past three. Well, that little sailboat now has come alongside. And I hope everybody's um, finding his time to go back in the crow or what, or Instow, but I don't think it is Rob, the boat doesn't look big enough. So, um, anyway, it seems to be popping on fair enough. I, he's sort of popping on faster than me, that's for dead sure. But then he ain't got tri kills, but um, all the crap I got a permanent engine down. Oh, it's a joke. Never mind, if the, if the winds were in the right direction, we'd be laughing. But as I say, even this light wind. If it was the right way with the tide, you can get where you want to go, but no, not today. It's not a goer today, and, and I've got to get a little bit on the beach, so it's either in snow or crow. So I might do in snow. Which you rob it right over there. Anyway. Well, that amazes me. Perhaps I do enjoy this steering the tiller. I put the boat back on the direct, more or less direct course now for the outside marker. And it's saying I'm going to get to the outside marker in 44 minutes. Well, 44 minutes is 4 o'clock. That's half hour after me, 3 hours before I tell you. This time. So um, I'm just going to head in as fast as I can now. And see if I can sail in all the way. It would be nice. But I don't have to play it by ear like I did last time. Once we get up to the um, thing. This engine's pretty reliable. She starts easy enough. So if I'm halfway over the bar and I need it. But then again, I can always start her and run her on a slow tick over. But um, yeah, let's get in now. Get the on the beach. And um, so we end up another bloody poxy episode. But it's good fun. I enjoy it, but it's just a lot of effort. Just for bloody uh, uh, one tide out here. Well, I got her running down wind now with the cell out as far as it'll go. And the front cell I've got pulled tight in behind this one so it's not flagging and flapping but i'm getting a decent speed straight for home now and um it's not a good tack angle this as i say i need to turn to the right but as i hit the bar from this angle i will need to turn right to go straight down the corridor so um, i'm hoping that i won't have to start the engines and then once i get in i can turn right again and start my engines when i get down in the bay but uh, anyway, we'll wait and see. It's all good fun. 
We've got a bloody splitting headache. That sun's killing me on through the side of my eyes. Well, good one out here. Well, I've got a running down wind. I've got the cell over the other side now. Because um, I've got, it seems to be better control. But the, um, the outside marker, the, the fairway marker is over there. So I'm now heading for the second boy in, which on my, my sheet is DDD. And we're basically heading straight for it. The tender just caught up with me. We're going so bloody slow. Every wave here gets, he catches us up on the wave. There's no, the wind, as I say, it, you, you think it was out and early out here, but it fucking ain't. We're running down wind now and we're barely doing a knot. But um, it's going to get us home anyway, hopefully. We'll we're, we're sail all the way in. It would be nice and just start the motor at the last minute. And then if I do go out again tomorrow, at least I don't have to buy so much fucking fuel to replace what I burn. But um, tomorrow is a sunnier day, a hotter day, and if it's like this, I don't think I'd be able to hack it. Because um, this is bloody hard work. And my poor old lady right now. She can't wait to get on the beach. Bill, let's see how we go. Well, just thinking, the last time I went over this bar, I was caught out here in a thunderstorm, well, it was 50 odd mile an hour winds and I got I was going across the Cavelli. In the end it cut down to about 35 and I darted straight, I couldn't run the engines, both engines were on the back of the boat and I went in literally on sails, but that was in plenty of wind. I'm just thinking now, with this as it is now, I've got hardly any rudder control. I'm sort of moving it all the time because it, every, every, every wave needs to be counteracted. So I just hope, I'm trusting to, I'm putting faith in this engine. It's started lovely every time so far, and I'm just putting my faith in it that it will start if I need it halfway and over the bar. But that's what you call taking chances, and that's what it's all about. It's good fun. But um, now the tide's going the other way on the bar, it's definitely, it's, um, with the wind, it's tended to, level out a lot better now it's gorgeous out here now in actual fact if you were sailing like this every day you couldn't go wrong apart from the speeds <laughs> a bit of wind anyway this is uh, another episode of mine coming to an end and i'm going over the bar completely on navionics i know i can trust it but to keep changing the settings on my gps is too bloody awkward this um you take your hand and your mind off what you're doing for a second and this boat's all over the shop and going over the bar is the last thing you want. So I'm just totally going in looking at my screen and the only reason I look ahead now and then is to see if there's any other boats or boys or anything I'm going to smack into. But hopefully this is taking me in and um, get there that'd be perfect I think just to get on the morning. So um, they say two hours before but it took me longer to get back by the time I'm actually well, on the bar, I'll be on the bar in about five minutes. I'm just coming up the outward bar now. A bit of an angle, but I've done that enough times. And um, once I get down the end of that corridor, once I hit that corridor, I'm going to bang the cell over to this side and um, turn the boat down the corridor to the right. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. I'll show you where I'm going. There's the, there we are, about to hit the bar a bit and then I've got to turn down that tunnel there so I want the cell on the other side so I can actually sail down there and I've got a small cell on the front so fingers crossed we're going in okay well we've just come over the outside um, the bar the worst bit and we're going to be on the corridor any minute and I'm going to have to turn right to get down the corridor to the next buoy so um, there's the buoy coming up I'm going to turn to the side to miss him. I hit one the other day. <laughs> Bloody, um, couldn't believe it. I, I sat there dreaming. But anyway, let's get in. We're going there now. Well, now we're coming into the, um, the effects of the tide. We're inside the bar now and making our way down the gully towards Instow. And we're doing, I think it's a 3.2 knots on the bottom there. So that ain't bad at all, but most of that's the tides because there's hardly any wind. As I say, it's just gentle breeze, just just about enough to give me steerage. But like I say, I've got to be ready to start that bloody engine at instant no less. But to weather like today, if um, if all goes wrong, I can just take my hands off everything and make sure we start the engine, then power out with the cell stood up. 
I got home. But there's no panic anyway. It's um, going over perfect line for the inside boy. And that'd be on, on the bend there. Where the river bends there, you can see the blue bend in. That's where the boy is. And when, when we hit that, we turn down and we'll have a better wind then. And hopefully, we'll be able to sell proper instead of just going downwind. So anyway, let's carry on and get in, see how we go. Well, we made it in as far as we can now. And uh, we're just going to level out now and run down winds again. But um, th there's no wind really over the tide. I just pulled the cell around with any effort at all. But now we're going to run home. There's a little boat over there leaning well. he got plenty of fucking uh, set up then. Now, it's turning obviously. Anyway, we're cutting across now. It's nice and gentle, there's hardly any wind. When I get up there, I can just bloody drop the bloody sails down with the boat drifting as she is, there's no fear of that. But um, as I say, I'm uh, trying to turn across when now I've got a little bit of breeze still behind us. I need to drop that other sail across to the other side in a minute now. So as we're um, sailing big time. Let me do that now because at the moment we're basically like oak two. So, uh, well, not oak two, but you know what I mean. Sell's the wrong side, let me change it. Well, there you go. It just took me a split second to pull that across. There's still only a little cell, but to tack up here with the tide now, we don't want no, well, <laughs> we won't go no faster with the little bit of wind we got. That's a poxy little yacht over there, that. He's going well, though. He's happy, Anna. Going against the tide as well. I don't know what they're on. Must be drugs. <laughs> Still, let's uh, cut across. I've got two metres. I'm at a dangerous spot now, so I must watch it. I should have went down to the boys, but I, I like cutting across. Anyway, let's head for home. Well, we've got a perfect little tack angle, I think, now all the way, all the way up to uh, home base. So um, I'm just going to get up there. We can see the... We're popping on now with the tide. The tide's doing three, four knots, so we're really popping on. But it is just with the tide. We're doing just over four knots. So um, I need to hope now with the wind, uh, as I go across now, the boat will start sailing better. And um, take me straight on to me point. And then when I get near there, I should uh, start the motor, cut, drop the sails and go in. But in the meantime, while I'm creeping up here now, I'll grab me grappling iron out and all the bits and pieces in case I need them. And uh, we'll see how we go. But, as I say, we're nearly home. Well, I've got a black grapple iron out and adjusted. Each of those loops is shorter than the last one, so we can't catch. And, um, as I say, I'm going to get an angle for home because I'm getting an angle for the bloody rope boy now, which I don't want. So you only got to take my eyes off this boat for a split of second to look at the camera. Anything. And, and she's very off. But I, and she's the same in stronger winds. But um, anyway, there's the doctor up there. His camera. He wouldn't have went out today because he likes going to salt and then the, the, the winds or the breeze is blowing straight on. So tomorrow it's down to be a bit windier. So he wouldn't want to have been out there. So anyway, there's the, um, the lighthouse. And um, I don't know much more film I'm going to get now because, as I say, from this point on in now, things get a little bit busy. I've got to get the cells now, get the motor started and um, get on the boy. So, um, fingers crossed and I've got to watch the depth. So, if I don't enter any more, then I hope you enjoyed the video because it was the right balls up for me. The dogs, as I say, and sailing, no good, unless you can get to shore every night. Which you can't guarantee, not without a bloody good motor to pop you along in emergency. Anyway, there's Insta, I could have went over there, but they're all on the water by the look of them all. So, um, I don't know. I know that's Rod's boat there. Anyway, I better concentrate on getting home. Well, thank God it is a calm day because you wouldn't believe the grief we had. I keep this one, the main sheet wire. Wrap right round here. So as when I'm putting it up, I don't have to be directly in the wind, I can pull it out of the winch. But this went round and on itself and I couldn't free it. 
I've just had hell of a job filling it. Thank God I got in the gully and the wind and the breeze has taken me clear. But now I'll start the motor and head for home. But the cell pin went and the cell totally collapsed. Thank God there's no wind. I'm a lucky shot. Well, we've got the motor end away now. But, um, because we got in a lot quicker than I thought, the, um, I don't think my mooring's floating yet. So I need to um, take my time going over. So I'll have to do some slowing down and chop about. Anyway, all my wires sorted out. And basically I hooked onto my outside mooring. And when my boy in there looks like I can get on it, we'll head in there and anchor up in there. But uh, I need a little bit of water because I miss that boy like I miss this one. You ain't got room in there to part about going round and round. Anyway, I'll tie the butt up when we get in. For now, we just sit here and wait. And so end up another episode. Back on our own mooring. And uh, plenty of time yet, it's early. Just put all the tools away and all the bits. Get everything off the boat that's got to go off. And um, what a fucking waste of time that was. Bloody eight hours fucking sailing, all this grief packing up. And, ah, for fuck's sake. And poor other dog. You do, Pete, you silly cunt. Never mind, that's the dog. I love her, I wouldn't be without her. Anyway, one trip safe. It was epic. I learned a lot about the boat. And I learned about uh, the conditions out there. With no wind. And... Uh, Thank God there was no wind, because when I come in now and everything went wrong with the cells, we was lucky. I'll look out for that in future. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Come and have an epic and follow me out sometime. If you think you can do better, over and out.